I've been asked uh, this afternoon to talk about three things, and the first one of these is alternate pulses. And I'll put a proviso in that and say why. I'll, po I'll pop back to that why in, 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 during the talk. The FAO lists 11 types of pulses grown worldwide. They're all high in protein, they're all low in fat, and they're all nitrogen fixing. And I've listed it. You're right, this point is not very good. And I've listed down the side there the ones that are grown in the UK or have a potential to be grown in the UK. We've got peas, dried peas they're called on the, on the list usually, but they're combining peas. We can grow those, we can grow them well. Farber beans or field beans, we can grow those well, providing you give them the attention that they deserve and not just... <laughs> I'm going to put beans in, I'm going to put peas in, and let them sort themselves out. You need to give them the same attention to detail as you would to your all seed grape or to your cereal crop. Just looking at the table on the right hand side, you'll see that we import 58,000 tonnes of peas. So we're not even self sufficient in peas, we need to import peas. So therefore, there's growth potential for growing more peas within the UK. If we look further down the list, looping, there are some loopings growing in the UK. There are some problems with them, with, with them particularly geographic. The albus types, the white types, have a much wider area in which you can grow them over. They're more pH tolerant than the, uh, luteus, uh, than the yellow luteus types or the angustifolius blue types. However, getting white loopings through to a grain harvest is much more difficult and they're often used in in forage harvesting rather than grain harvest. And moving down the list to the chickpeas and lentils, this was the why question. I think the why question is adding diversity. And if you again, if you look on the right hand side of the table, we're importing 39,000 tonnes of chickpeas and 18,000 tonnes of lentils. So there's a market for them in the UK. We just need varieties that are suited to the UK. Also, they're adding added value. You look in the supermarkets, you'll see peas. The price of pa packet peas as a dried product, and then you look at chickpeas and lentils. They're more than double the price of standard peas. So there's added value to growing them. Fasciolus, I've, I've put them down as fasciolus rather than um, anything more specific. And you'll see on the table on the right-hand side, they're listed as white beans. Comes along with kidney beans. 69,000 tonnes imported. These are the beans that are used as baked beans. Every household in the country will have baked beans in their cupboards. It's a ubiquitous... I see somebody shaking their head there, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's a ubiquitous thing that everyone uses. I've been at PGR a long time. We've been trying to grow white beans for baked beans in the UK for an awful long time, but we haven't got there yet. The other question was about rotational adaptations or challenges which George alluded to as well. And I'll skip right down to the bottom and from, a, from a, a meeting that was held in America, the pest management strategy plan for pulse crops which included chickpeas, lentils and dried peas. And from that they concluded that pulses are best grown following a cereal rather than a crop that can harbour pulse diseases such as botrytis, powdery mildew, phanomyces, root rocks, fusariums and that's not the exhaustive list, there's more than that. And pulse crops are quite susceptible, diseases that can overwinter in the soil and the stubble. The standard PGRO recommendation over many years is to grow pulse crops no more than one in five years. And again, George, you're probably aware that some of the vining pea groups are growing eight to ten years rotation and even longer. And some fields that have had a very long history of growing, particularly vining peas from the 1950s through to today, they've taken those out of production. I think the thing is, where we say they're peas and beans, where you're introducing some of these more novel pulse crops, such as lentils and chickpeas, is perhaps to consider them as a pulse crop. So one in five years is a minimum. Some of these diseases, while they're, disease, while they're spe species specific, they may not show symptoms and they may not cause problems, but they could well be hosts, and we know some of them are hosts, and then you could be building up problems for future years. You may not even see that in the first rotation, but subsequent rotations uh, will follow. 
And the final thing I was asked to talk about was some of the intercropping work um, that we've been doing. PGI is relatively new into intercropping peas and beans with, with other species. I, I say new, more recently we've got back into it. Back in 1982, PGI were doing exactly this type of work. Didn't take off then, but we're in different situations now in a different era. So these are yields in tonnes per hectare. Really need a pointer for this, but if I try and explain. These are yields in tonnes per hectare. We've got the sole crops here, which are peas, spring oats, and spring beans. They're the sole crops and the yields on the side. We've then got mixtures here of peas and spring oats, and peas and spring beans, and then for just year 2019, then we had spring beans and, and peas together. Now the reason we chose those species, well we've tried barley in the past, it just isn't strong enough to hold peas up, because we were looking at, rather than in an intercropping situation, most people would look at what pulse can add to the intercrop rather than the other way around. So we're trying to treat the pulse of the primary crop and what can we add to that pulse crop to give a benefit. And in particular for peas, its standing ability at harvest is a crucial thing. So the one thing that farmers always complain about, peas not standing erect at harvest. So can we use something that is a scaffold to help the peas stand up? Barley doesn't do that. It's too weak stored. All seed rape didn't work at all. Pollen beetle had it initially, flea beetle had it initially, and the pollen beetle finished it up. Oats did a reasonable job at keeping peas standing. Didn't do a complete job, but it was better than peas on their own. More than that, it gave better harvest stability. So when the peas are being dragged into the combine, often it's very hit and miss, it's a little bit bitty being dragged into combine. Oats add that bit more bulk to it, and allow the peas to flow into the combine much more evenly. Spring beans, on the other hand, they hold the peas up really well. And more to the point, if you're growing spring beans and peas together, crop protection products are very, very similar. So if you are using crop protection products, then often they're one and the same across the board. But it's not all about yield. It's all about land use efficiency as well. And this is what we're now looking at here, which is land equivalent ratio. It doesn't matter what you put together in an intercrop, whether it's peas and beans, peas and oats, or anything else, you compromise the yield of the individual components. So put oats with peas, you get less yield of peas, you get less yield of oats. They're acting as a weed and a competition between the two. But overall, those two components added together, together give you more than, or you hope you get more than, the individual components. And that's what we're seeing here. So again, we've got the three individual crops on their own, peas, spring goats, and spring beans. And they have an LER ratio of one. So when they're grown as a sole crop, they have this LER of one. When we put spring oats together, and these are the different ratios, 70 plants of peas and 70 plants of oats. So we've gone from 250 oats down to 70. And we've got LER ratios in those mixtures with the oats are greater than one, apart from the lower ratio of oats in 2019. The best LER ratios is what I call full fat mixture, which is 70 plants of peas and 50 plants of oats in a mixture. That gave an LER ratio of 1.18. So an 18% increase in land use efficiency. That's huge. We've already mentioned the difficulties in separation. You can separate peas and oats reasonably well. Try and separate peas and beans. It's much more difficult. There could be products out there, though, that you can use peas and beans in the same mix. The disappointing one was the spring beans and oats. I'm not 100% sure why perhaps you want to do this, but uh, I think the reason why the LERs in this case is less than one is because we didn't have enough oats in the mixture. They're both erect crops, and I think we could have pushed the oats way, way higher than this. Some commercial work we did in strip trials used 135 oats 
and that gave much better LER ratios. Thank you.